Good morning. Afternoon, evening, whenever it is you're tuning in. We are so thankful that you are here with us. Again, my name is Sam. This is my buddy, Zazazazazazai. She's amazing, she's glorious, co-host to the stars. We love having you here. We love getting to know you. We love learning how to be thankful. All month long, we've been talking about what? Gratitude. Gratitude, yes. Gratitude, if you remember, okay, is letting others know how they see they helped you. How you see how, how they how they how they've helped you. You see how they've helped you. Yeah, this teamwork. Is what Sam did. <laughs> yeah, teamwork makes the dream work. And guys, gratitude does not stop. Just because November is about to be over, we have to keep on practicing gratitude forever. And we have to keep on practicing those Echo Kids values. So let's do it. Let's practice. You ready? Hey, Lizzie. Hey, what? Are you ready? Ready for what? Echo Kids values. What? Echo Kids values. Okay. Hey, hey Emma. Hey, what? Are you ready? Ready for what? Listening ears. What? Listening ears! Okay. okay! I will listen twice as much as I speak. Okay! I will listen twice as much as I speak. Okay! Hey, Lizzie! Hey, what? Are you ready? Ready for what? A kind mouth! A kind what? A kind mouth! Okay. okay! I will use my words to honor others and speak life. Okay! I will use my words to honor others and speak life. Okay! Hey, Emma! Are you ready? Ready for what? Helping hands. Helping what? Helping hands. Okay. I will use my hands for helping and sharing. Okay. I will use my hands for helping and sharing. Okay. Hey, Lizzie. Hey, what? Are you ready? Ready for what? Humble heart. Humble what? Humble heart. Okay. I will always think of others before myself. Okay. I will always think of others before myself. Okay. A person like Sam, come help us out. Hey, hey, hey! Let's do it. Here we go. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His faithful love continues forever. <laughs> Psalm 136, one. Good job, y'all. Great job, great job, great job. Did you know that you were made to praise God? Yeah. Yeah, you were actually created to praise God, to tell him that you are thankful. What? That's why I love worship so, so much. Do you love worship? Oh, uh, yeah. Ah! Too. We are actually doing what God created us to do when we worship him. Mind blown, amazing. So let's get up on those feet. Let's show God how thankful we are that he loves us, no matter how silly we are, that he loves us, no matter how many bad choices we make, and that he loves us even when we're mean to our sister. Are you ready? Get up on those feet. Let's praise our Jesus. Every time I'm feeling down, you pick me up. Sing.
first two. I'm grateful for the way you've been a friend to me. Sing. I'm 
should have in your life. Now, you're wondering, what is a habit? Um, it's something that you do often and it's something that you actually want to do. Do you have habits? Yeah. I have habits. One of my favorite habits is um, dancing whenever I eat something that's super tasty. It's super fun. Like say I'm like sipping on a milkshake. They go like this. It's a milkshake dance. <laughs> are super cool and we want to learn the habit of staying grateful. What? One way we do this is through a celebration that is talked about in the Bible. Okay, so you know like we have birthdays. What's something else we celebrate? Oh, uh, how he died on the cross. How he died on the cross. Okay, Easter. Easter, yeah, we celebrate Easter. Uh, what's another big celebration? Christmas. Uh, Christmas. Birthday. Hello. We love celebrations. Another celebration the Bible talks about is communion. And it's all about being grateful for what God has done for us. So let's learn more all about it together. You ready? Yeah. Habits. I don't mean habits like picking your nose or biting your fingernails. Oh, sorry, I know, I know it's bad. I'm talking about habits that are good for you, like um, eating your vegetables or brushing your teeth before bedtime. These are good habits. And today, we're talking about getting in a good habit of gratitude. Gratitude is letting others know you see how they've helped you. It shouldn't be hard to get into a habit of gratitude. After all, saying thank you is really easy, especially if you're sending a text. See? Thank you. Or, thanks. Anyway, the thanking part is the easy part of the habit. The part that isn't so easy is the remembering part. Usually, when we don't say thank you, it's because we forget. That's true when thanking other people, and it can be true when thanking God, too. In today's story, we're going to learn how we can make a habit of remembering what God has done for us. It sounds like a good habit to me. Bye. The Bible 
It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11. The night before Jesus gave up his life, he had a special dinner with his closest friends, the Passover meal. Take this and eat it. The Israelites had been celebrating Passover for a long, long time. It all began in Egypt when God's people were forced into slavery. At last, God sent Moses to face down Pharaoh and demand freedom for the Israelites. Let my people go. Over and over, Pharaoh promised to let the Israelites go, but then changed his mind. And each time, God sent a plague a terrible warning so Pharaoh would let the Israelites go. There were frogs, flies, hail, darkness, and more. And finally, God sent the 10th and most terrible plague of all. The Lord says, every oldest son in Egypt will die. It was a terrible day. But God made a way to save the sons of the Israelites. Go at once. Each family must kill a Passover lamb. Put some of the blood on top and on both sides of the door frame. The Lord won't let the destroying angel enter your homes. The Israelites did just as God had told them. That night, Pharaoh finally ordered the Israelites to leave. Get out of here. Go! The Israelites packed so quickly that they didn't even have time for their bread to rise, so they baked flatbread without yeast. Mmm, crunchy. Then God led them out of Egypt to freedom. Always remember this day. You and your children after you must celebrate this day as a feast to honor the Lord. As God instructed, the Israelites made a habit of celebrating Passover with a meal of lamb and flatbread with no yeast, just like the bread they had taken with them out of Egypt. Blessed are you, Lord our God. Jesus grew up celebrating the Passover every single year. But when he shared the meal with his friends the night before he died, Jesus did something different. He changed the Passover meal. The Apostle Paul wrote about it years later in his letter to the Corinthians. On the night the Lord Jesus was handed over to his enemies, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. He said, this is my body. It is given for you. Every time you eat it, do it in memory of me. The bread was a reminder of how the very next day, Jesus would give himself up and allow himself to be killed for us. Paul continues. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. He said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Every time you drink it, do it in memory of me. The drink was a reminder of how Jesus would allow his own blood to be spilled out so that we can live. Because of Jesus, we don't have to try to prove to God that we're good enough. All we have to do is believe that Jesus came to rescue us and choose to follow him. Jesus took an old habit of gratitude, the Passover, and made a brand new habit of gratitude, the Lord's Supper or communion. The Passover meal was a celebration of how God had rescued his people from slavery. Now, the Lord's Supper is a celebration of how God has made it possible for everyone to be rescued from sin and death through the life and death and resurrection of Jesus. And for the last 2,000 years, 
people have been celebrating what Jesus did for us by eating bread and drinking wine or juice together. Some churches do it every Sunday or every month. Others might do it a few times a year. They use different kinds of bread or wafers or wine or juice. But in every case, the habit is the same. It's a beautiful chance for us to remember together the amazing way that God has rescued us and to thank Him for all He's given us. For thousands of years, people have been finding different ways, different habits, or traditions to help them remember what God has done. We remember that God sent Jesus to Earth by celebrating Christmas. We remember the time Jesus came back from the dead every Easter. And another thing people do to remember Jesus died on a cross for our sins is celebrate something called the Lord's Supper or communion. Some people remember the Last Supper Jesus had with his disciples by eating bread or wine. Some people eat crackers and juice. But however you celebrate, it's important to remember Jesus died for you because he loves you and he made a way for you to have a relationship with God. Here's the one thing to remember today. Get in the habit of being grateful. Find a way every day to thank God for what he's done. And be specific. Thank him for the smell of the rain or the sweetness of the ice cream you're eating or for the music that makes you want to dance. And if you have a moment to really remember what he's done for you through the Lord's Supper or communion or during a special holiday, don't let that moment pass you by. Really think about God and how much he loves you. I think that will be a good habit for all of us. And it won't cause pain in your cuticles. I'll see you later. Thank you. Wow. What Jesus did for us is simply amazing. Say amazing. Amazing. Say so incredible. So incredible. Say I am so grateful. I am so grateful. I am so thankful. I am so thankful. Our God is good. Our God is good. Yes, that is what communion is all about. So, as this year, as we celebrate birthday, as we celebrate Easter, as we celebrate Christmas, let's also remember to celebrate what God has done for us through communion. Say communion. 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 Let's remember to say grateful, to stop, to pause, and say thank you, God. Thank you, God. Oh, yes, just like that. It makes his heart so happy when we take the time to say thank you. Let's pray. Hands together. Thank you, God, for all the amazing people you've put in our lives. Thank you for sending Jesus to the cross for our sins. Uh, thank you for loving us no matter what. We love you, God, and we want to say thank you. Amen. Amen. Air five. Air five. Parents, I am passing the baton to you. Today we talked about habits and creating habits that keep us grateful and keep us saying thank you. So when you're around the dinner table today, I encourage you to talk to your kids about their habits. Maybe focus on the good habits and then brainstorm together a habit that you could create as a family to practice gratitude. Maybe write one good thing down a day that happened that day. Put it in a jar or a folder or something like that and you could bring it out on Christmas Eve and read about all the good things that happened that month. Parents, you got this.